Hey, yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing another video game review, and that will be of Assassin's Creed Revelations. I have the Xbox 360 version, but there's also a PS3, and I'm pretty sure, 90% sure, there's a PS, uh, PC version. So, Assassin's Creed Revelations. Before I actually get into this review, I'm just going to assume that you guys already played Assassin's Creed or know something about the Assassin's Creed series. The reason for saying that is because it would just take too much time uh, to recap everything there is about Assassin's Creed, about the game controls, about the open world, how Ezio and Altair does parkour, and how you assassinate people. Really, from Assassin's Creed 2 onward, it has been pretty much the same gameplay, the same controls. Uh, there were changes from the first game to the second game. But um, it's pretty much all the same throughout the whole entire series, only with a few things added on here and there. So, with that said, I'm just going to approach this a little differently than I would most of my other video game reviews. Although, to be fair, I always approach my video game reviews different from my other video game reviews. I never actually do them the same. I try to have a simple formula, but it never actually works. I kind of just ramble on and on about the game. So, with that said, let's actually talk about Assassin's Creed Revelations. Assassin's Creed Revelations is the fourth game in the main Assassin's Creed series. There's some spin-off games on the DS, I believe, but they really don't count. And, Assassin's Creed Revelation is also kind of the end story for Altair and Ezio, the two main assassins that have been featured thus far. Um, actually, if you watch Assassin's Creed Embers, which is a short film, that's actually the true ending for Ezio. I'll get into that later. Let's jump into the story. Assassin's Creed Revelation takes place after Brotherhood. Uh, sometime after Brotherhood for Ezio. Ezio is now an older man in his 50s, and his main goal right now is to get into the library of Altair. Um, in order to do this, he has to get five keys, which are located in Constantinople, and then find a way to open up the library. Although, not all these keys are easy to access, and some of them are even, even in Templar hands. While this is going on, Desmond, the present day assassin, although I think he's technically in the future, but whatever. I think he's in year 2012. I could be wrong. But anyways, Desmond is trapped in the machine that allows him to go back into the past and the memories of his ancestors. And the only way to get out of being trapped in this machine, you guessed it, relive the memories of his ancestors. Because that seems to be the answer for everything. Anyways, in addition to this, you also get to play as Altair. Um, in between each sequence with Ezio, he gets to relive a memory of Altair, kind of mapping out what happened to Altair after Assassin's Creed 1. So that's a general, uh, general basis of what the plot is. Um, I'll go into story more when I talk about the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Let's talk about additional features and gameplay. Assassin's Creed Revelation does not stem away too much from the gameplay of Assassin's Creed 1, 2, and Brotherhood. Um, although it's more akin to Brotherhood than anything else. Um, it's kind of like the Madden series or wrestling game series where it's all pretty much the same gameplay, just a few more bells and whistles added on here and there. And the few bells and whistles that are added on to Revelations are 1. The ability to do a strategic uh, mini game, which you are plopped on top of a building and you order assassins around and it's kind of a real-time strategy game um, in order to defend your assassin strongholds. And the next feature that is introduced is uh, the ability to craft bombs. And you basically have three different kind of bombs uh, categories. You have impact bombs, which hurt people, smoke bombs, which uh, allow you to get away, and uh, diversion bombs, which cause a diversion. Uh, there's different kind of forms of bombs you can make. There's so many different varieties. Um, however, mine were always simple and basic. Shrap metal, uh, gold, and smoke. Bam. That's all you need. Gold to distract people, shrap metal to hurt people, and smoke to just get away. Or smoke to cover you up so you can assassinate people like crazy. In this, uh, Ezio also gets a new blade, the hook blade. Which, in reality, doesn't add too, too much more to the Assassin's Creed uh, Gameplay. All it really does is allow you to jump up a little farther. It allows you, when you run and jump, to hook onto walls a little bit easier, which is actually pretty useful. 
and you can zip line. That's about all the uh, hook blade allows you to do. So those are pretty much the main features that are introduced into Assassin's Creed Revelations. Like I said, after each sequence with Ezio, you get to play as Altair, but the the Altair minigames are really just that, minigames. I mean, in one of the games, you have to fight off some assassins, in another game, you have to climb up a wall, in another game, you have to disarm X amount of assassins, in another game, you have to use the Apple of Eden to, I don't know, help you go to the bathroom. They're really just more minigames than actual gameplay with, uh, with Altair. So those are the little bells and whistles thrown into the game. As for graphics itself, to be honest, I really didn't notice too much difference between this game, Assassin's Creed Revelation, and the previous games, like Brotherhood, when it came down to graphics. At least when it came to in-game graphics. There were obviously like the beginning cutscene that I think everyone has seen for the trailers where Ezio is about to be ha uh, hung. Um, it, those are good graphics, but they're only like at the very very beginning of the game. Other than that, the graphics are pretty much the same. Maybe a little a little tag cleaner, but it's pretty much the same when it comes down to graphics. So with that said, let's actually just jump into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Uh, because as you can see from here, there's not too much to talk about revelations that makes it different from other Assassin's Creed games. So good. Uh, what I like about this game is I like how it wraps up the stories for Ezio and Altair. And the t uh, two stories take different paths. Um, I like Ezio's story a little bit more than Altair's story, although, to be honest, I'm a little biased towards Ezio because I like him better. Uh, but Ezio's story wraps up very nicely, and then if you go into watch uh, Assassin's Creed Embers, which is a short film, that shows the last two days of Ezio, which uh, really ties up his story very nicely. Um... Uh, so I like how the stories are tied up between the two assassins. This allows us to go into uh, some new assassins and maybe some new time eras. Uh, to be honest, I would like to see an Assassin's Creed game set in maybe Japan because they showed, uh, I believe it was, maybe it was a Chinese, uh, it was either Chinese or Japanese assassin in Assassin's Creed Embers, I forget. But it would be cool if there was a game in Asia, um, India, Asia, uh, China, you know, um, Japan with the Assassins, or maybe an Assassin's Creed game during the American Revolution, or the French Revolution, or um, maybe during World War II or something. It'd be quite interesting. So it's nice, as, as much as I like Ezio, and I do like Altair also, it's nice to see us move on to different Assassins, which is good. Um, I also like a lot of the characters that are introduced, particularly I like Sophie, who is introduced, or Sophia, Sophia, ugh. Uh, I like her. She's very charismatic. She's very outgoing, and she's very full of life. Uh, the bad guys aren't quite as good as in the previous games because you got the Borgias for the previous games, and those were actually pretty decent bad guys. Uh, but for the most part, I like the cast of characters. They had a lot of life. They the voice acting was beautiful. Uh, so on a whole, the story and the characters were good. Um, another good is the gameplay does not decrease at all. It, it's uh, very much similar to the previous Assassin's Creed games, so you're going to get that great freedom of motion, great uh, freedom of movement. You can go anywhere and do anything you want, which is also nice. Uh, and the world is quite big. It is quite big. I don't think it's the biggest Assassin's Creed world. I think Brotherhood had the biggest world. I could be wrong, but this actually has a big world to it also. So, uh, very big world, uh, which is good also. Uh, bad. Well, I think one of the Assassin's Creed series' uh, biggest faults is that all the games tend to kind of become the same. Um, it's kind of similar to the Pokemon game series. Weird. Weird comparison, but Assassin's Creed Revelation is really very little difference between that game in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and there's very little difference between Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Assassin's Creed 2. The only big gap was between 1 and 2, where the differences were very noticeable. Um, the gameplay is the same, the missions are very similar, uh, there's very few things added on, and even the features that are added on really don't make the gameplay feel that much different. Half the time I didn't even do those strategic real-time games. I only did them once or twice. Once I got my assassins high enough level, they just took care of the stuff for me. Um, and the hook blade really doesn't feel too much different. It, it doesn't feel like the gameplay is that much different. It's solid gameplay. 
don't get me wrong, but it's not that much different, which is, like I said, a comparison to Pokemon. Solid gameplay, but the gameplay's been the same over and over and again. Which I guess is fun, because I still enjoy the gameplay, but I would like to mix things up. Uh, it's kind of the, the one of the few problems I had with uh, the Zelda series before Skyward Sword came out, is all the games kind of felt the same after a while. And they became very easy, and then when Skyward Sword came out, motion controls made it completely different. I'm not saying you should put motion control in Assassin's Creed, I'm just saying that you should find a way to mix things up a bit. So, uh, the gameplay is just very similar. I didn't really care, although the world was big, I didn't really care for the world, and this is set in Constantinople, and nothing against Constantinople as a uh, historical area, it just didn't feel as lively as when we were in Rome. I think Rome was my favorite place thus far for the Assassin's Creed series, but I, Constantinople, it didn't feel quite as lively or colorful as Rome was. Uh, maybe that's just me, but I didn't really care for the actual in-game world. I wish it was still in Rome. Or maybe somewhere else in, uh, maybe France, or maybe we could go to, I don't know, Prussia or something. But it, it just, um, Constantinople didn't work for me. Uh, it, it was still a good world, it just didn't work for me. It, it was, yeah. Anyways, moving on. The game is very short. Um, where Brotherhood and 2 were fairly long games, uh, this only has 9 sequences, which I'm sure the other games I think had 9 or 12, but they're very quick sequences. Um, to be honest, if I added out how much time I spent on the main quest, it was probably under seven hours. It's a, a very quick game. If I put my mind to it, I could probably blow this away very, very quickly. Um, and the other problem is, is it, the Assassin's Creed games are combat-wise just not that challenging because once you learn how to con uh, counter properly and once you know how to utilize every single weapon then you're unstoppable. The only way you're going to lose is if you jump off a building and accidentally kill yourself, or if you fail a mission, like a goal or objective. So the combat is starting to get a little stale. Uh, they need to mix things up. Like, they give you the option to pick up enemies' weapons, but you really don't, because you're fine with the assassin blade. And that's another thing. There's an option to get better weapons throughout the game, like better swords, but I just stick with my assassin blade, because once you learn how to con counter properly, there's really no need to get any upgrades of weapons, because all you're going to do is counter, and counters are always one-hit kills. For the most part, there's some enemies where there isn't. Uh, while I did like the story, I, uh, like I said before, I felt the enemies were a little stale, and there was no sense of, uh, I don't know, there was, I don't know if urgency is the word, but it didn't feel like there was any real threat. Look at it this way. In the game, Ezio's finding the five keys to Altair's secret uh, stash of library, whatever. And the Templars have one key, and eventually you find the other four. It's not like the Templars are going to be able to get to the library before you, because they don't have all the keys. You actually have more of the keys. All you have to do is get the last key. So it doesn't feel as though there's any real threat to the actual main story. It feels like Ezio could take a nice holiday and just get this done with. So that's another problem I have with it. Let's wrap this up. On a whole, whether or not you should get it. Oh, one other thing. Uh, like I said, the Altair missions. When I heard I was going to play Altair again, I was actually pretty excited. Although I like Ezio more, I thought Altair should get more to be uh, more more gameplay, more time. And the missions are so short; they're less than ten minutes. It's a little disappointing. Um, on a whole, whether or not you should get it. Sounds like there's a lot of problems to this game, but it's not really there's a lot of problems with the game. It's just the game is a lot of the same that we've seen beforehand. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I definitely had more positive experience than negative, but it's an easy game. It feels like all the other games, and while I do enjoy it, I feel like this is that they kind of fall in the rut to doing the same thing over and over again. So, when it comes down to it, Assassin's Creed Revelations, I give probably a 7.5 out of 10, if I had to rank it. Uh, Brotherhood and 2 are probably the best, and then Revelation comes next, and then uh, the original Assassin's Creed. It's a good game, but like I said, it's just more of the same that we've seen over and over and over and over again. Um, I think Ubisoft should take some time 
to kind of change things up, do things a little different, give us something different. Um, but yeah, Assassin's Creed Revelations, okay game, just not the best in the Assassin's Creed series. Uh, so I'm going to end this review here. Uh, this is Andrew saying peace out for now.